Hey, what's up? It's Schnell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, thanks to Witch's Coven Distribution, we get to go over Sinister Hate 1995. Heck yeah. Nuclear Blast. And it looks like it was distributed through Relapse. Because here's the old Relapse credit card number hotline. Based when Relapse was out of Millersville, Pennsylvania, also. When it comes to Dutch death metal, I love Sinister. Now, hate is no cross the sticks, but it's just as fucking good. Like, very enjoyable. Straight up death fucking metal. If you like death metal, yeah. It's death metal for fans of, guess what? Death metal. Classic cover art. Very 90s. But still sick as fuck. I want to call this number and see what happens. Like, I wonder if it still exists, you know? But, wow. What a monster. Nine tracks of just punishing yet catchy death metal it's legit very straightforward death metal and that's what I like about it like they're not reinventing the wheel they're just working on that wheel like truing it and making it, you know, like making the spokes tighter. Sinister just has that fucking sound. Especially with the production. Like, it's just, you know, like coming from Holland too, it's just... The guitar works phenomenal. It's killer fucking 90s death metal. So much good shit on hate by Sinister. And we have Bart on guitars and bass, AAD on drums, and Mike on vocals. Always liked Mike's vocals, although pretty, again, straightforward. Like, kind of of that, like, corpse grinder style. Like, it's not super guttural, but, like, you know, it's low and... Pronunciation is on the fucking money also. Especially considering, I'm guessing, English is Sinister's second language in 1995 because the lyrics and stuff like legit very clear and like yeah like you know it's not like it's not nothing like that it's just sick kind of like Morbid Angel formulas and like Steve Tucker era Morbid Angel. I would say like vocally, although that's you know obviously a little bit later. So that Dave Vincent Covenant era like vocal style where he started getting a lot deeper. Like if you go from Mike Browning on Abominations of Desolation and then 
I moved my Morbid Angel tapes, so I'm like forgetting where I put them to. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Wait, I can grab an LP real quick. Hold on. I apologize, folks. But we'll grab two vinyls. Okay, so. Alters of Madness. Dave Vincent has, like, a more snarly, semi-black metal vocal delivery. Like, the whole, ghouls attack the church. But, like, again, vocal patterns, very important. Pronunciation, extremely important. And Morbid Angel, you know, it's very easy to memorize these lyrics, like, if you don't know the lyrics to Chapel of Ghouls, you're not a Morbid Angel fan. I'm sorry. But when you go later on, you know, with Steve Tucker, I feel like Steve Tucker, he's filling Vincent's shoes, but also, you know, like I said, there's definitely a lot of, like, other influences from around the world because... Back when Alters came out, there wasn't that many death metal bands around. I mean, there was, but not really. So, again, this was kind of one of the first to break the mold. You know, there's those arguments. What is the first true death metal record? I mean, I really don't know. Like, because, like, what do you want to consider death metal? Because there's, like, that death metal compilation from, like, fuck. It's, like, it's a bunch of, like, thrash metal. I know it has Halloween on it, but it's called death metal. And it's a compilation. It's a compilation that doesn't have any, like, real death metal on it. But when Possessed kind of came up with the term, people just ran with it. And that's fine. Because in the end, you got sick promo photos like that. And going back to Alters, 1989. But some of these songs are from, you know, the Mike Browning years. Abominations. Trey's even rocking a fucking shirt. Somebody stole Vincent's shirt. Oh my. <laughs> and Peter's, I don't even know what he's looking at. And we got fucking Richie just, I don't know. I don't know what Richie's thinking. But he's probably like, why am I wearing a leather jacket in Florida? <laughs> nah. One of the best records of all time. But... You know, not everybody was lucky enough to live stateside. I mean, fuck, you were considered a poser in Norway if you liked the second Morbid Angel record. <laughs> so I can only imagine what those, like, black metal elitists felt about <laughs> Sinister. They probably hated this. As this is kind of, especially in 1995, although I kind of praised the production it's a little little bit too clean for my personal liking but that's what's so great about an original tape copy there's parts on it where the tape hiss is like extra loud and it just has that extra like wet fucking blanket sound and it makes it just a little bit heavier and a lot of people ask me, like, how come you like cassettes more than CDs? And that's pretty much my number one reason, aside from price and the fact, like, I, I've lost so many CDs from them being stolen, just all sorts of nonsense. But, like, when you have a tape from, like, 1995 that was listened to a lot... Like, it gets a little wonky sometimes. And sometimes 
that sucks. And, you know, you might have to, like, re-spoil the tape or do a little, you know, plastic surgery. But this bad boy just sounds fucking so much heavier based on age. Listen, I know my microphone is boof, but, like... Some cannibal corpse love right there. Now again, when it comes to Sinister, I love the demo stuff. I love, you know, Across the Sticks and Hate, you know, just a killer release. And something I hadn't heard in a long time. And when my buddy at Witch's Coven, he was like, yo, I ended up with two copies of uh, Sinister Hate. I was like, yo, fucking sick. He was like, do you have a copy? I said, I do not. And he said, I got you. And uh, this is the American Nuclear Blast Press. And it looks like... uh, Nuclear Blast was ran out of the relapse office back in the mid-90s. Again, I should know this, and I'm just, I, I've had, <laughs> when I broke my neck, that head injury, like, really fucked my brain up, memory-wise. Like, I used to know this stuff, like, off the top of my head, but, um, yeah, it looks here like relapse was Nuclear Blast Records, um, distributor. I'm like 99% sure they were because my local record store always gets old, like, first pressings of, like, relapse imports. And they're always, you know, like, nuclear blast. So, again, I'm just kind of putting the pieces together from my fractured memory. Because uh, I could have swore there were other labels, too, that Relapse distributed stateside. But I can't remember off the top of my head. Like, for some reason, like, I want to say Candlelight, but that doesn't sound right. So I'm just going to quit guessing. Because I think at the end of the day, it might have been Century fucking Media or some shit that picked up Sinister, I honestly, I do not remember. But Nuclear Blast, that also sounds right. Again, it has been a very long time since I heard Hate. So when this arrived a few weeks ago, I was fucking stoked. Because I, again, like I said, I hadn't heard it in a really fucking long time. So it just, you know, as soon as I put it on, I was just like, oh, like, yeah, I forgot all, like, how, you know, enjoyable this album is. And, like, when it comes to, you know, 1995, depends what type of death metal you're into, but a lot of it, a lot of it sounds like this. And that's my only real complaint about Sinister's Hate. When I say straightforward death metal, I'm not exaggerating it's pretty just you know not really taking chances and that's fine because again the riffs and shit kind of speak for themselves it's a good death metal record but they're not reinventing the wheel especially in 1995 they were probably just trying to just keep it going and yeah great record but like i said 
definitely not their best, but still totally worth your time. 18th Century Hellfire, badass track, Awaiting the Absu, Embodiment of Chaos, Art of the Damned, Unseen Darkness. There's so many killer tracks on here. Like, definitely worth hunting down a copy. Probably on vinyl, it would be easier. I'm guessing. Again, I don't really know. This could have got a reissue by Flaga or somebody recently. I really don't know. I'm just grateful to Witch's Coven Death Distribution for sending this bad boy my way. Because, like I said, I am a Sinister fan. And as I was saying, don't go into this expecting, like, you know, a blood incantation, like, record. No. No. This is something very Dutch, but not really. Like, you know, there's a lot of Dutch death metal that sounds extremely, extremely similar. This, although, like I said has a very just distinct death metal sound, vibe, everything. It's a good death metal album. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day. The production is a little, you know, pro, and that's fine. Not everything needs to be a rehearsal tape, as good as this is, though. But seriously... If you're looking for some, you know, legitimately top tier, especially when it comes to production, death metal, look no further than Sinister and 1995's Hate. It's a good record. And, you know, 1995, you had like Morbid Angel Domination. Like there was more industrial stuff being included into death metal. And I don't know if that was to sell records, if bands started just, I don't know, because industrial music in 1995 was pretty popular. And, like, I am a big Nine Inch Nails fan. I mean, you watch the channel, you fucking know. So, like, especially uh, Broken. For example, this was uh, originally, I think it was 92 or 90, 93 it was. No, 1992 Broken was. There's the, the date. I think the release date might have been, no, 1992, October 5th. Sick. But, um, yeah. You know, a lot of bands were, like, adding outside elements to their, you know, music and shit. Godflesh had been doing it since day one, so they were kind of, I wouldn't say set, but I know Godflesh definitely, you know, before, sadly, taking a hiatus, but then coming back with some of their best material, like A World Lit Only by Fire, Post self, etc. Not many bands come back and do a comeback album and have it even be remotely good, let alone one of their best recordings ever. Godflesh did it. So it's totally possible. But with Sinister, yeah, you know, like I said, very straightforward, yet it's good. But if you're looking for, you know, like something along the lines of just, for example, even pathologist, necrophagist, like I'm just throwing two opposite ends of the spectrum here. You, this isn't for you. But like if you're listening to a lot of like Deicide, Serpents of the Light, Once Upon the Cross, Morbid Angel Covenant, Cannibal Corpse. I would say more monstrosity, because definitely reminds me more like Corpse Grinder vocally. But uh, at the end of the day, fucking A. Sinister hate hailing from 
Holland. This is a classic. Nuclear Blast Records, distributed stateside by Relapse, out of uh, Millersville, Pennsylvania, back in the good old days of 1995. I think I was in fifth grade in 95. Yes, I was. I was in fifth grade. But, as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Daily Classic goes to Sinister with hate. And again, thank you to Witch's Coven Distribution for sending this bad boy my way. Now, to get to Cross the Sticks. And... But for now, I'm happy with having hate in my life. So... Thanks for watching as always, you fucking rule. Tails. And I've been doing these videos in advance because I have a very busy week coming up. So, just trying to get you folks your content and yeah. I love y'all. Have a good one.